I resisted studying temperamental differences among children and their implications because I entered psychology because I wanted to discover how powerful the environment was and I was very reluctant to acknowledge the role of any biological differences between children. But my work, as if a force, a mystical force was guiding me toward temperament, kept on reminding me that you're missing out on the subtle biological differences. Uh, and so after three reminders, the last one occurred when we did a study of daycare of Caucasian infants and Chinese American infants in Boston. And as early as three months, one could see the differences. It was then that I realized that I should be studying the temperamental differences among children. Now by temperament we mean initial biases that are a function of inherited variation in the neurochemistry of the brain. Remember there are 150 molecules and they differ in their density and concentration so there are going to be thousands of temperaments and they're very difficult to measure. So if you're a smart scientist you pick the ones that are ready to be measured with the methods that are available at the time. And so I had watched children for so many years, it was clear that children raised in nice, nurtured homes differed in how cautious or bold they were when an unfamiliar person or an unfamiliar room or an unfamiliar experience occurred. It was the reaction to what was unexpected and so that's where we began and we asked, well, what are the determinants of that? And to abbreviate 30 years of work, what we found was that a small number, about 20% of healthy Caucasian infants, parenthesis, it might be a different proportion in Asians or Africans or Latin Americans. So these are Caucasian infants from good homes about 20% get very excited. They thrash their arms and legs, they cry, when you show them an unfamiliar event, like a mobile moving in front of their eyes, or sounds coming from a speaker. And that's because a structure in their brain called the amygdala has a chemistry that renders that sight excitable. They are biased by that temperamental uh, configuration, biased to be shy and quiet and fearful, although their environment can eliminate those over characteristics. About 40% are just the opposite. At four months, they lie there, they babble, they don't flail their arms and legs, they don't cry to the same unfamiliar events. And they turn out to be the extroverts, sociable, high risk, they love going to new places, they're talkative, they're relaxed. Now what we learned after studying through age 18 is that you can change your outside persona. If you're a high reactive infant, you're not necessarily a shy, quiet, introverted adult. What you do retain is what Jung called your anima. You retain a recognition that you get easily tense. It's easy to make you vigilant. And so once you are aware of that, you try to avoid situations that will elicit that uncomfortable state. That's why so many high reactives are likely to pick solitary vocations like science, writing, poetry, computer programming, because they know that being a trial lawyer or being a pilot or being a surgeon are too stressful and they don't, they want to avoid such experiences. And measurements of their brain done by my colleague Carl Schwartz confirm that they do have a more excitable structure called the amygdala. On the other hand, the other group, the low reactives, they grow up to be sociable, outgoing, high risk, one of our high reactive adolescents forged a letter to 
the admissions committee of a private school that he didn't want to go to. He was admitted and he forged a letter from his parents saying, no, my son does not want to go there. No high reactive adolescent boy would, would forge a letter from his, from his parents to the school. And another said with great seriousness that when he was an adult, he planned to campaign to be president of the United States. Again, no high reactive uh, adolescent would have that goal. So that's where we are. Those are two important temperaments. They're related to introversion, extroversion. Uh, we meet such people every day. Bill Clinton was probably a low reactive infant. There's a possibility that Jimmy Carter might have been a high reactive, but I'm not certain. But remember, that leaves thousands of other temperaments that are still undiscovered. And I hope that some of you who are young watching this video may decide that this is an area of research that you would like to enter. I promise you a very satisfying life if you decide to do so.